Starbucks Can I get a pumpkin spice latte, please? Is that large? Yes, please. From the cream and drizzle? Uh, no, it's fine, thanks. Amazing. Do you want to come out for me? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Fright fans. I really no idea how to start this. This I just bought a uh, pumpkin spice latte. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to record for. I've had nothing but software issues. This is the last time I'm ever going to announce that I'm doing a video. I'm just going to do them from now on because every time I announce that I'm going to do a video, something goes wrong. Ah, software sucks! Anyway, I'm here to discuss the Horror Hall of Fame. I didn't even know it existed until like mid-week this week, this just uh, been. I came across it on YouTube while I was at work, I watched them, I thought, oh my god, and I decided, right, I'm gonna, I, I want to talk about this. So the first annual Horror Hall of Fame, um... Okay, so I'm not sure if that video saved, but the laptop just died on me because, um... Uh, this laptop is old, and the charger just decided to fall out without me realising it. <sighs> FML. I bet that didn't save, I'm gonna have to start all over again. Which is probably for the better, that, uh, intro sucked. <laughs> Laptops on, microphones on, lighting on, pumpkin spice latte pretty much full. But it looks like it did save. So maybe I'll just add all this in, including this bit. Uh, yeah, this is very meta, isn't it? Okay. Are you working now? Right. Okay, so yesterday somebody told me, uh, oh, you're doing an episode on Chucky. Yeah, have you seen the news? And I was like, oh no, what now? And I thought, uh, he said, oh, the actor of um, Child's Play was caught uh, diddling. I'm trying to be careful for YouTube's sakes. Diddling. And I was like, oh no, please, not Brad Dourif. Brad Dourif's a legend. Uh, turns out it's not him. It's like the little guy that played Chucky, I think, in the first film or the second film. He was caught... Um, being, you know, weird online or something, and he just admitted to it. And I was like, thank God it wasn't Brad Dourif. Because, uh, he, yeah, he does feature in this. Uh, if you've seen my Instagram post and saw a picture of Chucky in a white tuxedo, that will become apparent. Because literally half an hour after I watched it, I decided, right, I'm going to do my first Halloween video about this. So, yeah, um, Brad Dourif, thank God. Not a diddler. This is like the horror version of the Oscars. It was, um, it was hosted by Robert England in 1990. Uh, it's a great concept. Oh, such a wholesome show. I love it. I watched all three of them. Uh, I'll put the links down below f to the, uh, you know, the YouTube links for the shows. Uh, the third one, I don't think it's all there, but I'll put the links there anyway, if anyone is interested in watching them. I'm going to cover most of it here anyway, or all, all the highlights of these um, three shows. So let's go with the first episode, 1990 Horror Hall of Fame. Undead from Universal Studios in Hollywood, California. I, I should also note that the Crypt Keeper was also in these, probably to um, help promote Tales from the Crypt, which had would have been on HBO at the time. I think it started filming in, like, 1989, 1990. So roughly around the same time this came out. So they were probably on the first or second season. I'll probably do an episode on Tales from the Crypt. I don't know what I'm doing yet. This I just want to talk about horror films, basically, or horror stuff, or Halloween. Take a swig! Every time I take a swig of your... Pumpkin spice latte every time I say I'm going to cover something. From HBO's Tales from the Crypt, The Crypt Keeper. Thanks, Robert. I'll be happy to lend you a hand. Just make sure you get it back by Tuesday. <laughs> there was a lot of celebrity appearances in this, a lot of comedians. Sam Kinison was in the first Horror Hall of Fame. He did a bit. He, he did a couple of minutes on stage. Uh, rest in peace, because Sam Kinison's dead. 
this is going to be a theme going forward. I mean, this was filmed in 1990. A lot of these people have unfortunately passed away now. They had the actor kid from Cujo and Jason in full costume and hockey mask come out to induct Night of the Living Dead into the Horror Hall of Fame. It's, again, I'm going to say it throughout. Wholesome entertainment. Not a phone in sight. Ugh. The, I wish I'd have known about this when I was younger. Anthony Perkins from Psycho, who, again, has uh, passed away a couple of years later with AIDS. He, um, he accepted Psycho into the Hall of Fame. Was it Psycho? Yes. Psycho, uh, yeah. Zelda Rubenstein, uh, the little old lady in Poltergeist, also passed away. Um, she, she for some reason inducted Alien into the Hall of Fame. Our sixth inductee is Alien. Yeah, rest in peace to Anthony Perkins and Zelda Rubenstein. Starbucks. I'm sorry, um, to the both of you for raising a Starbucks to your um, untimely demise. Chucky came out and did an examination on uh, foreign language horror films. Again, just wholesome, warms my heart. So they're good, but when it comes to spending your hard earned money on a real movie, remember, buy American. Go see Child's Play too. Let's sit England, get my limo, I'm out of here. Just to see like Chucky and Jason um, inducting <laughs> movies and stuff into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, good stuff. So Anthony Perkins comes out to introduce the nominees for Best Horror Film of the Year. This gets a bit awkward. <laughs> Roll the clip. With all the, uh, but it's not so huge that I'm not going to need these. Okay. Uh, I'm here tonight to present the award for the best horror film of the year. The nominees are Dark Man. I didn't see that. <laughs> Nightbreed. I'm sorry I missed that. Arachnophobia. I'm definitely planning on that one. Gremlins 2. And the one that you just saw the clip from, Tremors. Yeah, he basically admits that he hasn't seen any of these films. He announces the winner as Arachnophobia, and then they cut to a shot of a gremlin, a disappointed gremlin in the crowd. Wholesome. The director, Frank Marshall, I think it was the director anyway, came up to accept the award, and then a big spider comes down to grab the award and lift it up. Again, wholesome. And a great, uh, a great cast. Oh my heavens. Well, actually, this award really belongs to the star of Arachnophobia, and I think he should be here to pick it up, and here he is, Big Bob. Thank you very much. I was actually worried that that um, rig wasn't strong enough to <laughs> carry the award and it was going to hit him on the head. Imagine if that happened. Okay, so the second Horror Hall of Fame. Sorry if you have to look at my nostrils because I'm looking again on the Wikipedia page. Films inducted this year. They did a long piece. I actually remember a lot of this. Uh, they did a long piece on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, EC Comics. Actually, um... Pumpkin Spice Latte is not that bad. It's growing on me. Actor Bella Lugosi, production company Universal Studio, presented by Elvira. The movie The Birds, which is uh, the second Alfred Hitchcock movie to be put in already. Anyway, this was, uh, this was a year later, 1991. Stop it! Stop! Oh, please stop! Stop it! Hi, I'm Gilbert Gottfried. And I'm here to give you a shriek preview of all the horror films coming out this year. Hey Siri, when did Gilbert Gottfried die? Gilbert Gottfried passed away on the 12th of April 2022. So rest in peace, that's another 
Oh, boys, uh, covering this is making me feel old. Throughout this Hall of Fame ceremony, they had like these little vignettes of uh, how to make special effects presented by Steve Johnson and Linnea Quigley. Again, wholesome. Just tie a very thin fishing line to a small button. Now, fishing line is a good material to use because it's transparent, usually won't read on videotape. Just let it rip. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. They held an in memorial for Freddy Krueger, a fictional character. I think they were filming the Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare uh, in, in 1991, or it might come out in 1991. Yes, it did. Awesome. I'm going to miss my old friend, Freddy Krueger. I should have said a few words at his funeral. But I just didn't have the guts! <laughs> the Horror Hall of Fame continues with lots more shocks and surprises. Will you be back? Of course you will! <laughs> and again for the second year running, it got a bit awkward again when they did a uh, Horror Movie of the Year award Presented by Vincent Price. The five nominees for Best Horror Film of the Year are Misery, Child's Play 2, The Silence of the Lambs, Predator 2, Jacob's Ladder. And the winner is... I'm going to give you that, darling. Thank you. Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Excepting for, excepting for Silence of the Lambs is the executive producer, Gary Getzman. <laughs> it's just like this little awkward moment where um, he says the name of the producer that's won and he's already on the stage and the guy's like, should I go and come back? Yeah. Yeah, it got a bit awkward, but you know, to be fair, Vincent Price was like 80 years old when this happened. He would pass away on October 25th, 1993 of lung cancer. The last role he would play would be the inventor in Edward Scissorhands. He was 82 years old. I actually have a Vincent Price box set right here of um, most, not all. All, not all. Not all. You'll get that joke in a minute. I, I, well, I might as well make it the song of this episode. Go list, uh, I'll get to that. Yes, these are the, this is the Edgar Allan Poe collection. Uh, one that's missing is Mask of the Red Death. I don't know why it's not in this sec, but it's not. So, great film. They did come back again in 1992 for Horror Hall of Fame 3. <laughs> This seemed to have a lot less of a budget. Robert England was doing a hell of a lot more. The Crypt Keeper wasn't involved. I think this ran on a much smaller budget and uh, it was no surprise that this would be the last one. According to the IMDb trivia, The Bride of Frankenstein was the only new inductee into the Hall of Fame. All of the others were repeats from the first two ceremonies. Why would they do that? Weird. Either that's just... Either somebody wrote that fact after looking at the Wikipedia, or that's true, which is just strange. There's so many horror films they could have inducted, and so many producers, directors, and so forth. What the hell was going on? Why did they even bother? Anyway, despite this, there was a performance by a comedian slash magician, Tommy Cooper, American version of Tommy Cooper, basically, the amazing Jonathan. Oh, thank you! Oh! Thank you very much! Thank you. We're going to start with a very cool magic trick. Uh, you, the lady in the white, do you have a handkerchief? All right, then do this because you got something hanging on your nose. I'm sorry, but it's bugging me and I can't concentrate. Okay, that was fun. Anyway, uh, 
This is a, uh, what's your name? Maggie. I'm sorry? Maggie. I know it's Maggie. I'm just sorry. Anyway, uh, we are going to blindfold Maggie, and we're going to try a psychic experiment. She's going to guess something that I hold over her head, even though she's never seen it before. Now, I don't uh, do the traditional blindfold like a lot of magicians. What we're going to use, Maggie, uh, a playing card over your eye, and we'll just staple it, okay? And we'll put this one here, and we'll staple it. And, oh, oh are they falling off? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's the staples aren't real good. So we'll just hold it there, if you would, please, and we'll use tape. Okay, and we'll just tape that around, and around, and around. Fact! Blindfold. Okay, and... Okay, here's something else. Here's something else I got, Maggie. We're just gonna, if you don't mind, put this black sheet over your head. Would you hold that like that, please? Do you have it? Okay, and just so that that doesn't fall off. One more tip. Okay. I think that qualifies as a legal blindfold. <laughs> Now, Maggie, what you have to do is you have to concentrate and tell me what it is that I'm holding in my hand. Nobody's going to help you. What do you think? What do you see, Maggie? Uh, Ace of Heart and Three of Clubs. Well, see, those are the cards over your eyes, Maggie. You oh. have to look from within. Okay. Um, is it uh, car keys? No. Uh, is it a car? the hell can I be holding a car? Um, okay. Is it something that goes in a car? It's nothing to do with a damn car. <laughs> Concentrate. Well, can I feel the object, please? <laughs> oh, God, it's a pair of scissors! Yes, she got it, ladies and gentlemen! It was a pair of scissors! And you guessed it, the amazing Jonathan passed away last year. He was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy in 2007 and despite doctor's prognosis managed to perform shows in 2017. Unfortunately he would succumb to his illness and would die in his sleep on February 22nd 2022 at the age of 63. There is a documentary on his life on YouTube. I haven't had a chance to watch it but I am going to. We come to the movie of the year award which this year uh, for some reason was just um, presented by Robert England, who was presenting the entire show. So they didn't even get a new, like, actor or anything. This this was weird, man. It's like they really cut the budget and they didn't want to continue with it or something. I don't know. I don't know why they even bothered doing this one. And now we come to the moment we've been waiting for. The winner of the best horror film of the year. The nominees are... The Addams Family. <laughs> Child's Play 3. Alien 3. Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. And The Lawnmower Man. And Pet Cemetery 2. And the winner is. The Adams Family. Accepting the award is the Adams Family Lurch, Mr. Carl Stricken. Yeah, not only is this slightly awkward because Robert England, who presented the entire show, is also presenting this award, but every movie, apart from The Adams Family, every movie in this is a sequel. And then when they finally announce the winner, some weird farty pyro just goes off right next to Robert England. Very strange. The Adams Family! <laughs> so Adams Family won, and they didn't even bother paying for the rights to the Adams Family theme song, which goes to show this had a very low budget. They just couldn't be bothered. I guess they had it in a contract that they were going to do this, and they just cancelled it because... They did announce, Robert England did announce they would be back for uh, Horror Hall of Fame 4, but that never happened. And that's very unfortunate. My verdict, I enjoyed the hell out of these. I think I got into horror in like the early 90s. If I'd have known about this, I definitely would have enjoyed these and uh, they would definitely be something I would watch, uh, you know, not annually, but like on the regular. Uh, I have 
I have certain things I like to watch uh, during Halloween. I'll get into them in another episode. Take a swig of your um. <laughs> take I've, I've actually finished it, but you know, take a swig of yours if you've got one. Well, it's time to finally lay the Horror Hall of Fame three to rest. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves tonight, and I thank you for joining me. But before I depart, I'd like to leave you with something really frightening to think about. I'll be coming back for more to host the Horror Hall of Fame for... Good night, everybody. Thank you. Anyway, so I guess that's it for this weird episode. Um... I'm going to go watch one of these. Yeah, I'm going to watch the first Chucky to celebrate the fact that Brad Dorif is not a diddler. God, that scared the crap out of me. Uh, song suggestion for this episode, I suggest you go listen to Beneath the Mask by Bell Witch, which has clips from uh, Mask of the Red Death, Vincent Price, basically. In honour of Vincent Price, go listen to that. I think it's a great track. Um, I've been Ben... I'll always be Ben, or at least I will be until I die and everyone's forgot who I am. Um, until next time, try I to enjoy, enjoy the daylight. daylight. Uh, Paul, look, geez, about the delays. There's nothing I can do about it, and I'm not re-recording. So, screw it. Everything is choppy, 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 choppy. Everything's delayed, delayed, delayed. Ugh. It's going in how it is. Look. <sighs> I'm not re-recording it. I've had a I've had a rough time trying to uh, sort out the software such and such. Um yeah, sorry, I'm on a budget. I'm not but I'm not buying new stuff. It's not happening.